in greenhouse gas emissions, uh, India's emissions is two gigatons uh, every year. Gigatons of carbon equivalent every year. But the opportunity is that India's total emissions is just 7% of the global emissions. America's is 15%, China's is 30%. Now, this is not to say that India mustn't and shouldn't and, and wouldn't have to do more. I believe that that 7% will grow and grow at alarming rates if we are not careful. And the opportunity is that India, knowing that it is only 7%, knowing that even though it contributes two gigatons of carbon every year, carbon equivalent every year, can still uh, improve its track record yet further. The other, in terms of particulate matter, I look at cities. Now we look at the 10 most polluted cities. Nine out of the 10 are in India. But look at it differently now. I went through the list of 500 cities that was prepared by the w based on WHO data. 500 most polluted cities. And of the 500, 32 are Indian. Just 32. Of the top 10 most polluted cities, nine are Indian and none are Chinese. Of the top 500, 283 are Chinese. <laughs> Which goes to say, while India has many of the most polluted cities in the world, it has many other smaller cities and towns and hamlets and villages that are not yet polluted. So the challenge is scrubbing the air in its 32 cities. The opportunity is preventing the concentration of particulate matter in its other cities and its other villages. So there's challenges, but I see a lot of opportunity. I'm optimistic about the opportunity because India has done a lot. And among the many things it has done, one of the most uh, admirable results is the eradication, well, not the eradication, the reduction of poverty. In the 10 years prior to 2016, uh, according to UNDP, a good 271 million people are out of multidimensional poverty. This matters. This matters in terms of the right to breathe in India because it is the poor that emit a disproportionate amount of particulate matter simply by heating their homes and cooking their food in fossil fuel, using fossil fuel, and using biomass, which is very inefficient in terms of uh, uh, reaping the benefits of the calorific value. And so India has had successes in terms of fighting poverty. One good example is the LPG gas that has been distributed. Uh, I've read that 100 million households have benefited from free LPG gas. I haven't yet found out what that translates into reduction in both greenhouse gases and in particulate matter. Another initiative that must bear fruit in terms of reducing particulate matter is electrification of homes. 25 million homes have been electrified in the last six years. In Delhi, five million houses, households receive 200 units of electricity free of cost. And all this must add up to reduction of particulate matter in the air. Yet, Delhi is very polluted. And yet, nine of the 10 most polluted cities in the world belong to India. So therefore, a lot more has to be done. For instance, India's commitment to go all electric in terms of uh, road transport by 2030 must be met. And these policies will contribute towards improving the quality of air, which will, by extension, contribute towards giving people the right to breathe. 
I am very excited to hear about uh, Mr. Singh's uh, financial incentives and policy nudges to improve the quality of air in the cities and then to improve uh, the construction and agriculture because all of them contribute to uh, pollution that, that not just sits in the Indo-Gangetic Plains. They actually seep in through the Himalayas. And once they seep in into the Himalayan valleys, they have absolutely nowhere to go. And right now, sir, they have started to enter Bhutan. Mm -hmm. So if right to breathe is a fundamental right, mm -hmm. if it is a human right, and if it is a trans is recognized as a trans-border issue, then my country would have to issue a bill to correct the infringement of our right to breathe. We are making good progress in a sense that Bhutan and India collaborate in the development of hydropower. Hydropower benefits Bhutan because we have access to all our electricity is renewable, by the way, and all our excess electricity goes to India which can, which does offset uh, uh, carbon in India. And so I think uh, this right to breathe, I see it as a fundamental right. I see it as linked to the right to life, but I see it as a transnational uh, issue, uh, an issue that can be solved, and uh, an issue that uh, especially Bhutan and India, at least in our immediate neighborhood, can solve. Thank you.